The University of Derby and Aston University work together on this JISC-funded project to develop problem-based learning scenarios for psychology students in Second Life, a 3D multi-user virtual environment. Second Life enables the students to practice their professional skills development, an experience that is particularly valuable for online distance learners. The real advantage comes in that we can set up effective learning environments for people that geographically are hundreds and hundreds of miles away. We're providing a lot more online distance learning opportunities and technology offers us a way to interact with students that we couldn't have done in the past where distance learning courses were done on paper-based basis. You really couldn't achieve an, an equitable sort of student learning experience as you can now with learning technologies. Problem-based learning is the main pedagogical approach taken by the Preview Psych project, but Simon Bignall also wanted the ability to deliver online lectures to campus and distance learners. First of all, we need to offer digital equivalents, so we need to do what we do well in an on-campus environment within the virtual world. So that means being able to do an effective lecture. It is very much different. It's a little like juggling at first, so there is a skill set that one requires. For example, there are multiple modes of communication. You have to monitor the chat. You have to monitor the real-time audio, so if you're using microphones. Um, also, we've got interactive and smart tools within the teaching environment. For example, an interactive survey system that we can use in real time. And um, questions that come in as we're speaking or giving a virtual lecture. In a normal lecture, if you like, you wouldn't have that, uh, that back chat going on there. So it's very easy to monitor feedback. And then we went into thinking about problem-based learning techniques where there's more interactivity between the students themselves. And the um, avatar facilitators would take a, a background role, if you like. A setup whereby you've got this family who have got a range of problems and there are clues scattered around the house. The uh, students, when they go in, have to make decisions based on the information that is available. Um, and then they have to go around the house collecting information um, listening to conversations that are available within the house and looking at information which is available in the main problem-based learning area and using that information they have to answer the questions posed within the problem-based learning statement. As with all projects of this nature, the outputs were critical in establishing clear benefits that support the wider strategic aims of the universities involved and ultimately the project team was determined to see other disciplines and universities making use of their findings. One of our foci at the university is about real-world environments and engagement with the workplace. You can't actually offer that to all students, but you can offer it through Second Life. And that offers students the opportunity to be in a real-world environment, but it's a safe environment as well. One of the things that uh, Vanessa and I found while we were conducting some preliminary research is that students started to find themselves working as a first peer resource. So they were actually teaching each other how to operate in the environment without us having to do anything. Great. We want to develop students that take responsibility for their own learning and independent learners and that sort of environment encourages that. One of the advantages of using the virtual world for teaching and learning is that it allows students to express themselves in ways they couldn't possibly have done before. And what I've found in certain teaching sessions that I've run is the quieter students will have the most wild avatars and of course that's got an advantage to the students that sometimes might you know, not take an active role. I think before we built it, academics were coming in seeing that just flat land and saying it's all very, all very well, but what use does it serve? Now we've built something like the real, real world house, they can see something being demonstrated and say, oh yeah, actually, actually I've got an idea, can you do this, can you do that? We constructed a best practices document that allows other modules and subject groups um, from not just Derby University, but um, putting it out to other universities, other academics um, who are interested in this technology. So it's very much developing materials and sharing them. We've got to support all different parts of the institution to move at their own pace, but also identify strategically important areas for us. And so psychology were leading the way quite some time ago in using technology. And this was um, the next step for them. So they're at sort of 
well ahead of the game and they also have a very successful online distance learning program. This notion of blending learning between campus provision and online distance learning is very exciting because it might be the sort of sweet spot between what we've been doing in the past and where we might be moving towards in the future. I very much have confidence in 3D virtual worlds as maintaining a position there, if not the whole solution um, to some of the direction and challenges we're, we're facing in higher education.